There's no question. The issue of illegal immigration being facilitated by the Biden administration is a nation ending event. Now, of course, it may be that there are many people who believe in some kind of label that is the United States. But rest assured, with around 10 million illegal immigrants being brought into this country, give it a generation. This is the battle tactic of Democrats who know they're losing, know that those who believe in the constitutional republic are winning. And this is why the Biden administration is engaged in human trafficking. And that's true. On the southern border, even law enforcement, federal agencies are facilitating human trafficking. Ladies and gentlemen, I can confirm to you right now, I have per personally reviewed the evidence pertaining to the facilitation of illegal immigration. This includes boarding passes that state no name given. I have personally been shown the evidence of this. I have verified it. I will say for now, it's hard to know exactly what the source of these uh, of this information is. But what I can tell you is I have been shown uh, in for I've been shown the images of boarding passes from a major airline with the name, quote, no name given. Additionally, there are other documents and uh, videos that have been produced, it would appear, by I'm trying to keep things light because the story uh, uh, needs to be properly vetted and broken. But looking at this evidence, it appears that powerful organizations are facilitating human trafficking, colluding with major airlines, and the Biden administration is facilitating this. And thus, we ask ourselves a very serious question. What do you do when the highest levels of law enforcement are the ones breaking the law? Right now, we have a big story. New York City's James Madison High School forces students out of class to house 2,000 migrants amid winter weather. This was always going to be the case. We've seen similar things happen in Chicago already. The buildings that you've paid for, the institutions that you've invested in as a member of the public are being ripped away from you and handed to people who are not citizens, who have paid nothing, and they will be given everything. And thus, this dark question looms, which I will ask in 20 seconds. But I want to show you this tweet from Elon Musk. He says, this is what happens when you run out of hotel rooms. Soon, cities will run out of schools to vacate. Then they will come for your homes. Elon Musk is not wrong. In fact, he is terrifyingly correct. They have already, already asked. They said, if you have spare rooms, let the migrants stay there. We'll give you money. Sooner or later, you will not have a home. You'll have a room in a building. Sooner or later, as your landlord will say, I got a better deal from the government. So we're going to uh, split your apartment up. You'll say, you can't break my lease. The government will enact some kind of special provision, and they will. Your lease will be broken. You'll be required to live with these individuals. And why don't you Google search what happens to people who live with strangers who are willing to break the law to steal from this country? You know, I'm sure I'm offended. You know why? I'll tell you, I'm very offended. I pay a lot of money in taxes. The U.S. government and the state government strip away from me a lot of money. You see, my friends, I'm in a higher tax bracket for, for a lot of people. You see how much money they take in taxes, and it's a lot. And then as you make more and more money, they take more and more of your money from you. So I'm wondering where it is all that money is going when they're giving it away to these individuals. And now we ask ourselves the darkest of questions. Yesterday, we saw the story of Jewish tunnels. That's right. Jews in New York had built a secret tunnel under a synagogue. And there's a lot of speculation as to why exactly they did. These young men were willing to fight with police over these tunnels. And I thought to myself, clearly, there must be some ideological component. Now, what people are saying is that this sect of uh, um, Hasidism, I think it's it's called, believe that there's this guy who died 30 years ago who's the Messiah. I don't know. 
That's it, it may be whatever. I don't know the exact reason why they built these underground tunnels. But some people have speculated that the reason the tunnels were built in the first place was because during the COVID lockdowns, the state government illegally and unconstitutionally barred people from assembly and from places of worship in one of the most egregious violations of the First Amendment we've ever seen. If it is true, and I don't I'm not saying it is, but this scenario where Jewish men who wanted to worship built secret tunnels to be able to go to their synagogue. If that's true, I mean, wow. Then you have a serious question about what do you do when the highest levels of law enforcement are breaking the law? This is what we are seeing right now with the issue of illegal immigration. The Biden administration is engaged in human trafficking. I will say that again. The Biden administration is engaged in human trafficking. That is not an exaggeration. I am not being cute. I am not trying to be funny, nor am I being partisan or hyperbolic. It is a basic fact. It's terrifying. I want to make sure uh, uh, I I show you the full context of the uh, trafficking. Because while I can point out things, you know, uh, oh, man, I, I can point out the uh, let me let me try and find this story. From uh, 2021, which I've pulled up several times. Wow. Look, we can talk about the nuances of what it means to be engaged in human trafficking. We can argue that the Biden administration suing Texas to facilitate illegal immigration is trafficking. But how about this? Migrant children being flown into New York. But what happens to them after they arrive? That's right. 2021, the New York Post, Biden resumes air illegal into Westchester as migrant tide grows even worse. April 2022. A lot of people keep saying, oh, it's it's Greg Abbott in Texas. He's the one who's flying these migrants in. He's the one. Yes, Greg Abbott and other governors have been shipping migrants around the country. And we laugh at some of these circumstances. But correctly, many have pointed out that when Texas and Florida and other states began sending their migrants to other parts of the country. All they were doing was facilitating the human smuggling operations. So I'm not a fan. This story goes back years. In a shocking discovery and secret undercover video, we learned that the Biden administration is taking illegal migrant children from human traffickers and finishing off their journeys. These children are brought to human traffickers and smugglers who will ferry them to the border for thousands of dollars, deliver them to the Biden administration who loads them onto planes and facilitates and participates in the human trafficking operation. The result of which, of course, is that those who live in New York City, Democrat stronghold. Well, your students have just lost their high school. Now, I got to be honest, I think public schooling's broken. I think the high schools are trash. So I kind of laugh at the whole circumstance. But now to that dark question. When I'm talking about these uh, these Jewish men and their tunnels, you know, we don't we don't know what the real reason is. A lot of people speculate on stupid nonsense. And as I mentioned, it may just be related to some, uh, you know, very ideological religious thing. On YouTube. I always advocate to follow the law. It's one of the most important things you can do. The law doesn't always mean moral. And we understand that. And when there is an unjust law, we challenge it and we go to the Supreme Court. It's quite brilliant what the founding fathers had started, built and what has been developed. That is to say that if you are pulled over wrongly and you are given a ticket, you can go to court and you can fight it and win. And that's the way you do it. People make this mistake. It's come on, guys. They get pulled over and the cop says you were speeding, sign the ticket and you can leave. And they go, I'm not signing anything. You can't. You're lying. Blah blah blah. They fight with the cop. That's that's not how you win the fight. You know, you, you, you see two men enter the boxing ring and one guy decides, I'm just so angry, I'm going to hit him as hard as I can. And then he loses the fight because the way to win the fight isn't always just to target the, your opponent head on. In the current system we have, we've actually created excellent, excellent means of protection. You get pulled over wrongly. You say, OK, officer, he's just jammed you up. Take time out of your day. Maybe you can't afford to go to court. It's, it sucks. It does. Screaming at him is not going to solve your problem. So what do you do? You go to court. You argue to a judge and you say, here's here's why he was wrong. I, I remember this really great story where a guy got got pulled over for speeding. And when he went to court, he asked 
he, uh, he filed for the court before his trial. And he said he wanted the, the source code of the radar gun because for all the public knows, the radar gun is a random number generator. And they have to prove in a court of law that the radar gun actually tracks the speed of an individual. And the, the court agreed. And they said, that's a good point. How is the court supposed to know this is actually evidence unless you can show us and have an expert come and testify? That's the point. And now we enter this, this great challenge. Right now, what we are seeing is not something that you can simply adjudicate. 10 million illegal immigrants smuggled into this country with your money. How do you get that money back? You go to court, you file a lawsuit, they challenge it. It goes all the way to the Supreme Court, maybe in a few years. It's one thing when you can challenge a police officer and work within the system. It's another thing when the president of the United States is corrupt, doing backroom deals with his kid, siphoning money out of the system, paying off his cronies in Ukraine and facilitating human trafficking into this country. And this is the deep challenge and the dark question. When I advocate for you to follow the law, it's the appropriate thing to do for the reasons outlined. When I talk about the criminals and the way we deal with it is trials like they did with Nuremberg. I am correct. Sorry. You know, a lot of people can be like, no, Tim, you have to go and fight someone head on. That's wrong. I just love this. The, I, the analogy I give you is like, dude, the ninja did not walk up to the front gates of the, of the feudal lord's home, knock on the door and say, I hereby challenge you to a fight. They use subversive tactics, strategy and intelligence to succeed in their warfare. In this instance, that is court of law. When you have bad people doing bad things like what the Biden administration is doing, what we need to do is we need to win. Donald Trump needs to get elected. We need to hope that Donald Trump brings in the right people and that those in our sphere of influence can weigh heavily on the Trump administration in the next year and start arresting and holding trials for these criminals. Mass deportation of the individuals that they have smuggled into this country illegally. That's the path forward. But the darker question, of course, is in New York City, when the police illegally shut down places of worship and assembly, the police are the ones who are breaking the law. I'm to come on a platform like YouTube and say, for two reasons, you must follow the law. First, uh, I, I agree. We have this amazing system with a court, with courts that allow us to solve for this. And, and right now, the, 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 what, what must be done before anything else is we vote. A year is not a long amount of time. We get Donald Trump in. We get Cash Patel in. And we see the system be restored. If it comes to violence, that's the end of the system. We can't allow that. Right now, we have a tremendous opportunity to work within the system as it was built by the brilliance of the founding fathers. But in a place like New York, the dangerous question, what do you do? Am I? The, the second reason is, you know, look, you can't legally advocate for breaking the law, right? I can't go on YouTube and advocate for criminal activity. That's absurd. I wouldn't do that anyway. And uh, YouTube would ban me and I could actually get a visit from law enforcement. But what do you do, like in New York City, when it is the police who have been committing the crimes? Do I go on YouTube and just say, well, because it is under color of law that crimes are being committed, I just tell you to adhere to it? What if a police officer was preparing to murder someone in cold blood for an insurance payout? Are you supposed to comply with that officer as he indiscriminately commits an act of murder? No, of course not. I would have to tell you, if you witnessed anyone, citizen, military, politician, police officer, firefighter, if they're about to murder someone illegally and commit a, cr a crime, yeah, no, you, you, you do not adhere to that. You know, a lot of people have said, oh, Tim tells people to just follow the law, but blah, blah, blah. Listen, I'm saying that if you procedurally get pulled over and the cop is wrong, that happens. Go to court. Right now, what we're seeing we have the, 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 at the highest level, the opportunity to fix this is an election. People ask me, what do we do next year, Tim? Let me just say, I hope and I beg and I pray in the next year, 2025, the question is moot. What do we do? We did it. We elected Donald Trump. 
he begins the cleanup process. Ask me next year if something else happens, because I don't know how this country survives. But there is that great challenge as we're witnessing this mass migration and human trafficking. The border guards, many of them are facilitating the human trafficking. So let me let me let me say this. Dark days, my friends, we are currently there. And I hope this is as dark as it gets. They say the night is always darkest before the dawn. I hope the dawn is November 5th, 2024. And though it may be challenging and there may be a lot of crazy people making crazy demands and it won't be easy, I'm hoping that come January of 25, Donald Trump is sworn in and immediately begins the process of fixing and cleaning things up. Will it be perfect? No. Is the man perfect? Of course he isn't. But you have right now a very, a very serious uh, challenge. Uh, man, I mean, it is, it is dark right now. There's a story of a Border Patrol agent who told illegal immigrants to turn around and they're reprimanding him. What do you do as a Texas state law enforcement officer, sheriff's department, state police, when you are witnessing the federal government facilitate crimes? It is not hyperbolic to say federal law enforcement are working with human traffickers. If I if I told you that like a a group of Chicago police officers have joined a local gang and are about to rob a bank. You would not view those people as law enforcement acting under color of law. You'd say this is just just corrupt cops. They're dirty cops. They're working with gangs. We see it in the movies every single day. A cop on the payroll. You guys ever watch that movie uh, R.I.P.D.? It's a really bad movie, but it's kind of fun. Kevin Bacon's in it and Ryan Reynolds. And uh, Kevin Bacon's a dirty cop. Actually, he's a a ghost or something, but whatever. Kevin Bacon is a ghost. Sure. Some kind of like undead guy. You know, but basically he goes to this good cop and he says, here, take a cut. And the guy says, I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. So they kill him. Yeah, dirty cops, right? But what happens when the dirty cop is the police chief? And there have been movies like this where the whole department's dirty. And there's one good cop. Uh, uh, a good uh, here, Super Troopers. You guys ever watch Super Troopers? So it's the uh, state police, the highway patrol versus the uh, local cops, and the local cops are all corrupt except for one. And the woman helps the, the 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 state troopers. It's an interesting question. What is anyone supposed to do when you have men and women willing to work alongside human traffickers on the southern border, facilitating? some of the most shocking and egregious crimes we've ever witnessed. I'm not saying the most shocking and the most egregious, but some of them. The mass human trafficking operation being facilitated by the federal government is terrifying. And that's what we are currently witnessing right now. What is anyone supposed to do? The first thing is simple. And these are the challenging questions. How do you follow the law when it is law enforcement that is committing the crimes? Well, the first thing is these border guards, I want to make sure that they, 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 they hear this and they understand, as I've said several times, when Donald Trump gets elected, we will not forget what you did and the crimes you committed. And simply because you are instructed to break the law doesn't mean you're innocent. In fact, I think you should be punished more severely as someone who would violate and break their oath. So we'll see. The next thing is Texas needs to arrest any criminal facilitating human trafficking, regardless of the costume they're wearing. Some guy shows up on the southern border and he's wearing a uniform with a badge. Does it matter what he's wearing if he's a human trafficker? Imagine this. What if the cartels and the human trafficking operations recruited Customs and Border Patrol, National Guard, went to them and said, we'll pay you $10,000 help us with human trafficking. Maybe that's what's happening. Texas Sheriff, Texas National Guard, Texas State Troopers. When you see that guy in the uniform, you go, well, I guess I can't, I, nothing I can do about it. Isn't it just more likely that a cartel member handed the guy a thousand bucks in cash and said, don't get in my way? But the assumption among police is that it's legitimate and legal. We know it's not legal. In fact, the state of Texas has already said it is illegal to enter this state illegally crossing the border without without a standard immigration process. So when you watch 
federal law enforcement lift up the razor wire, destroy the barriers and help facilitate this. You are watching people outright break the law. You are watching these people in uniform, human trafficking. At some point, I'd imagine you will arrest them, but they're not. They're not doing it. I wonder if that's where uh, we end up. That's where we may go. In this year, I think we are going to see things that are really going to terrify people. And come November, I don't know how uh, we get a clean resolution to this election. Considering the illegal actions taken by the Biden administration, the subversion and destruction of the United States for personal benefit, you think these people are going to walk away? We are not just talking about people who may have committed a bribery scandal. We're talking about seditious conspiracy among people in various states. We're learning now that the prosecutor in Georgia met with, with the White House counsel several times before filing the indictment against Trump. That could be collusion between federal level Democrats and state level to target a political rival. We are talking about widespread corruption that is seditious and it may turn out treasonous. Treason, of course, would be aiding and abetting a foreign adversary during a time of war. It's very specific. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not necessarily any large scale wars, so perhaps there's no significant treason. But sedition? Absolutely. The targeting of Donald Trump, his supporters, the lawfare being waged is a seditious conspiracy. They are seeking to destroy and overthrow this country, and they hope you do nothing about it and don't notice. This year is crucial. The reason it is, is because we have a humble, peaceful option to resolve all of this, despite the seriousness of the crimes committed by the Biden administration. And that is to register your friends to vote, to overwhelm the election this year and vote, get everybody you can to vote and vote against the machine, which right now would just be Donald Trump. Far from perfect, but the best we can do for now. Some people may argue DeSantis is better. Uh, he's, he's not the best we can do, though. He's good. I like DeSantis, but his campaign's been abysmal. The Vake is better. But the opportunity is before us to address the issue, convince as many people as possible, and that's what must be done. Sun Tzu says you must win the war before you fight it. And should it come to a more serious outcome, we need to have won the war before it even began. And that can be as simple as we have an opportunity to vote. And should we vote in Donald Trump? Sure. There will be riots and there will be anger, but then there will be a course correction and this country will heal. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.